let's take a look around um, the Watch Street here in um, uh, Hong Kong. So at the beginning of the street, we've got Rolex, the whole house, the GMT Pepsi, the new one, a whole host of Daytonas, gold Daytonas. So there's the older version, you've got a ceramic one there. More gold, they're really into their gold here. So all the way down this street you've got loads of, these are mainly second-hand watches, not new ones. Uh, the new ones are on the other side. I'll take a look at them later. Think how much it costs. Wow, yes, more than what uh, <laughs> the average person can afford. <laughs> I, think, I think this has got to be the best store so far that I've seen. And the people inside are super polite. I asked if I could see the watches and I said, Yeah, no problem. Said, well, I'm not going to be buying any. They said, Yep, yeah, don't worry about it. Super nice. But they don't let you film inside because of security. So unfortunately, I couldn't get any shots uh, inside the store while I was looking at the watches. But I can understand their the reasons why they wouldn't let me. Some amazing watches. They've got the, was it, Summit Dupe something, minute repeater in there. And I said to him, you don't see that watch in England at all. It's amazing. Check out those Jaegers, the JLCs. Uh, so, that was the Turbion on the, the, the left. I'm really not into the skeleton watches though. They got the reversos. But that one. Oh, there's another one at the top. I didn't notice that one, yeah. This is a Turbion with diamond encrusted, which is $770,000. The one on the left is a hundred and. One second, is it? Oh no, that's one million, excuse me. One million dollars for that tourbillon, uh, the this perpetual calendar. Uh, the one to the right is $860,000. Now, I don't know what the exchange rate at the moment is. A sea of second-hand Rolexes. I've never seen so many second-hand Rolexes. Ooh, look at that. That is a Zenith El Primero rainbow. Oh, I might have to go and have a look at that. And we've got some Amigas here. Tide Poya. Maurice Lacroix. Ladies um, Rolexes. Tudor. And then you've got all the gold stuff over there. Take another look. Okay, so I'm going to have to work some price out. At the moment, the exchange rate. Let's look at the GMTs. Focus. So you got the, those are all Hong Kong dollars. So the exchange rate today is 9.5 for sterling. So you just have a look at that, whatever your local currency is. You've got some Daytonas up there. Milgauss. Hammerai. IWC. Uh, 
gonna have to work out some prices. Where's that Zenit? There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna have a look at that. I really like, I've always wanted one of those, but I never bought it. So I'm gonna work out the price and see what he says. Japan. This is Chinese brand. Oh, so this brand. Oh, okay. You don't like Chinese brand? No, these are all second-hand ones, of course, not new ones. Got some straps there. The IWC. That's like my Portuguese. Ten thousand four hundred dollars. Uh, the moment the rate is horrendous for sterling is about 8.6 so divide that by um, 10,400 uh, 10, by 8.6 and you get the sterling I can't do it in my head you've got uh, Daytona's <laughs> that young lady in the windows there laughing at me Find out what the price uh, exchange rate is in dollars. AP Blancpain. Seiko's. If you're a watch nut like me, Hong Kong is like a, a dream to come and buy watches. They're much cheaper than they are compared to most of the other parts of the world. Depending on the exchange rate. But because there's no tax here and you can always bargain with them. <laughs> I really like these Panerai uh, desk clocks. They're really cool. Very noisy around here. So these are uh, forty thousand dollars, which is about five, no, four and a half thousand pounds. Uh, just over five thousand US dollars. These are all the Panerais. Um, you've got J JLC. Vacheron. I haven't got the Vacheron that I want. The IWC. Very rare to see that one around. This scent tends to sell out really quickly. And you got a gold one there. there I can't get it to focus on the on the dial that is a red oh there it is there we go a red sub for $163,000 I might have to go in and have a look at that later I just don't have time today that box looks a bit worn then what do you expect with a second watch? It's one of the things about good things about finding a watch here, if I can get a picture of that, is sometimes you get some really rare ones that you don't, can't find anywhere else because they're old. But if you're looking for some vintage pieces, it's a good place to come and look. Hello. 
loads of protects here. And Rolexes, of course. You get these little stores like this. Which deal with all the second-hand watches. More protects. A brightening cosmonaut. You don't get to see a lot of them around. I'm a big fan of those. Well, what can you say about that? But, oh my god. Which moron would wear something like that? <laughs> Is there a price now? They've, they've hidden the price tag on it. Because it's so disgusting. Or if you have to ask the price, you can't afford it. Well, the lighting here is a bit naff, but that's just like mine, but mine's on a, a stainless steel bracelet. I got them to give me a bracelet. Well, I bought an extra bracelet with it, made me a good deal on it. The Safari, I believe it's called. This is the first um, time I've come across this brand here, Frank Muller in, um, in Hong Kong. I'm quite surprised. I thought it'd be more well representative. Tobion's just don't do it for me. I, I don't really get it. Yeah, fair enough, it's more accurate and all that. And I don't know, I just don't like the, the open... Uh, it doesn't appeal to me. Uh, we've got another one. I do like that. Don't get it too. I'm looking for a stainless steel one in the Portuguese automatic, the new in-house movement, but they've got a white one, they've got the rose gold one, but they haven't got a black one. So I'm going to keep hunting around while I'm here. Hopefully I can find one. That's actually not a blue dial, it's just the way the light's reflecting off it. It's a black dial. Yeah, yeah it just, just looks blue, doesn't it? No matter what angle I put it at. VIP watches, a whole slew of JLCs. Underneath, what have we got here? GP, Reggae, Vacheron. AP Panerai. That's a hell of a lot of Panerai. Uh, obviously Rolex. Um, IWC. IWC. Oh, these are all IWC. And then inside they've got others. How's this for opening times? Uh, the light here is just too much. They make such beautiful watches, do GLC. IWC here. I'm not a big fan of uh, their Portofino range. I think my favourite's got to be the um, Portuguese. And the Aqua Timers. Yeah, I do like their engineer line. These are new, I've not seen these in England. 
I really, really like them. Uh, the one in the middle, the grey one, is really nice. I'm not sure if that's white gold. Uh, I'll have to find out because normally they do greys with uh, white gold. So you can tell the difference between stainless steel and gold. Ah, Lang. Just see the back of it as well. Really nice watches, but ooh, are they expensive? That's better. My office is just here, well, well, up here on the seventh floor. So, being so close to all of these brands, good thing or bad thing? Mm, I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. with white gold it looks just like stainless steel yeah. but gold Daytona bimetal Daytona the turbium This is Chinese brand. Oh, sorry, it's Ben. Oh. You don't like Chinese brand? There's the IWC just coming into focus. Uh, mm. I really, really like that. Uh, what's the price in it? It's 96,000 Hong Kong dollars. I have to work out how much that is. Now, in Hong Kong, there's no duty, so it should be cheaper than England, but with the price of the sterling has just plummeted, it may not be. But I'll have a look in there. I don't know if I've got time today, but I'll have a look in a bit. I'll walk along some of the streets at the moment. Hong Kong really is a watch shop paradise. If you're into your watches, I would highly recommend come to Hong Kong. If you can't find it here, you're not going to find it anywhere. And if you're looking for vintage pieces, the best time to come is when they have the uh, Hong Kong Fair, the watch fair, which has just happened. And you can usually get some really good contacts with some vintage stuff. That's how I got my um, Rolex uh, 
Really nice. 